Okay, welcome to Dwarf Fortress with Timo. This is another tutorial. This one is going to be on uh, management and managing labors uh, a lot more effectively. I've seen a lot of complaints about uh, how terrible the work uh, shop interface is, and this will help you use a much better interface for assigning jobs. Plus, those that are just curious about how to use this interface, they know that it exists, but it's just a little overwhelming. This will help out with that as well. So, I've started a new embark here. I've set an initial work zone. I've got my trade depot up. This is going to be my little manager's office. And I'm going to show you about the only thing that I think you should be doing at the start of the game, usually, for dealing with these, these interfaces. So everyone knows this, this miserable interface. So here's what I add to this interface, is I make a wooden chair, and I make a table. And you don't even have to do this. Um, the, the chair and the table are going to be for an office right here. Um, and the reason I say you don't have to do it is the only thing that you have to do to use a better um, menu, which is this work orders menu right here, a manager is required to coordinate work orders. The work orders menu is what you should be using. And so to grid a manager, all you need to do is click on this little crown down here. You come to uh, manager right here. And I usually just pick my expedition leader, um, but oh yeah, I, I guess for this for this embark, I gave the skills to somebody who they didn't pick as the expedition leader. So I'm going to select my administrator here. I'm also going to at the same time give Odom the bookkeeper and um, broker and manager all that together. Usually, your expedition leader gets chosen as having those skills. Um, especially if you use the default embark. I had given somebody else some, some skills, and those skills I assigned to all three of these positions. So Odom Mizu here, he's gonna start doing all these jobs for me. As soon as I do that, I can now access this menu. There are no active work orders, that display is gone. But this person works a lot better if you've given him some place to do the work. So furniture, chair, um, we'll build that chip. Oh, they aren't finished with it yet. Or it was just uh, being carried. So there's the chair and the table. So it was just when a chair or, or when um, furniture is being carried around, it's not available. So now it's available. And the other furniture is a table. So I got a chair and a table in here. That's what's needed for an office. I'm going to define it um, as an office itself. So there's the office right there. I'm going to define you as my office, accept, and I'm going to assign this office to Odom, my manager. All right, now Odom has the little office to start doing stuff at. Now, instead of using the workshop interface, which is miserable, we're going to start using the jobs interface. So it's a little clipboard with a check mark. Uh, this is where we can do jobs. So, for example, um, assigning multiple things like beds. I want to make beds. Um, it defaults always to just 10 out of 10. Uh, it also says you can use any workshop. Uh, you can go up and down here with how many shops you want it to use. Um, I almost always just use it as can use any shop. But if for some reason you want to uh, change how many shops actually do it, say it's a low priority job and you don't want every workshop to be held up doing this kind of job, you could do something like one or two shops max. Say you have four shops, now only half your shops are gonna be taken up by this. Um, so that's up to you if you wanna do that kind of stuff. I almost always just use it as any shop. And then here's how many, uh, the next set of uh, pound plus minus is how many beds you're making. So I can do seven beds. I can do many more beds. If I just type this, I could type in how many beds I want. I can do 150 beds. And the base default is just a one-time order. So this is one-time order of 150 beds. You can also do uh, recurring orders. So if you click on this, this green symbols button over here on the far right, um, you're now putting in some conditions that the manager is gonna check to restart. And so for this, I'm going to do if, if beds is less than 10, make 10 beds. 
So essentially, after you've installed some beds, they're not going to be counted as available beds, and this will trigger. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it like that. For, this is a pretty simple one. What you could also do is, if I leave it like this and I run out of logs, I'm going to get messages over on the left-hand side uh, that say, hey, the, the bed's job is canceled because there's no logs. So if you want, you can also put that the amount of logs um, is greater than 9. You can also leave it as 10 and change this to, is, oops, I missed it, at least 10. So at least 10 and greater than 9 is essentially the same. For those of us that remember math and greater than less than symbols, that's essentially the same thing. Um, but this means that it won't start the bed's job unless I have 10 logs. Now this, I don't really bother with putting these in here because as soon as you add two jobs that are looking for wood, uh, they're looking for logs, if you've got 10 logs, they're both going to start and you're still going to run into the not enough logs problem. So I don't bother usually adding something like this for logs or stones because you're going to run into the same messages regardless of whether it's there or not. So I'm just going to leave it as, if I don't have enough beds, make the beds, um, and you just hit escape, and now it's out. So now my manager is going to come in here, and you see how it's, it's not validated yet. If I check over this, this order is checking its conditions for activation. Let's go ahead and um, unpause it here. Oh, I already was unpaused. There we go. So now we got a check mark. This work order is active. So now we've got make beds which is down here. So we've got a make bed that automatically showed up in the carpenter's workshop. And it's just going to keep on making it. I'm going to actually add some more just to show you how it works. I'm going to add some more um, wood orders. So in addition to beds, there's chests. Uh, make wooden chests. So I'm going to do the make wooden chests. If empty boxes is less than 10, make 10 wooden chests. So again, the manager is going to have to go ahead and validate that. Give him some time to do it. No, we still didn't do it. Come on, manager. Get on your job. If you go on this screen, it, it pauses the game, which is why I'm, I'm going in and out to, to try to give the manager time to actually validate that. Okay, come on. All right, so now the, the make wooden chest is validated. So if I come back to here, I now have make a bed, make a wooden chest. And you see how it just swapped. So these are gonna just go back and forth swapping. If I added a third wood then here, it would be a list of three. And every time something got done, it would get down to the bottom of the list. So that's how multiple different orders work, is that it just puts up a queue of one of them and it flows through. So you can have and for when you're doing automatic orders, you'll get up to five um, that are queued up in a single workshop. So five different things. And it's gonna be whatever is at the top of this list. So I've got bed, wooden chest. Say I had six different things validated for wooden objects. The top five things on that list in this list right here that you're looking at would all be showing up at your wood workshop. As soon as I got through, say, the make beds and it made all 10 make beds, this make bed would drop to the bottom of my wood list. And then whatever was that sixth item would now be the fifth item, and it would enter the rotation of what's being made by your workshops. And what you could do on this screen is, say I, I add something new and I actually want to start making those pretty soon, I can use these little blue arrows to increase and decrease the priority of, of what I'm making. If I want to get it, either stop making it or get something else to start making it. Um, some other things you can do that are, are pretty neat is so when you're doing, um, say, smelting, um, it doesn't really matter what type of ore. So with smelting, um, I want to make sure that I have enough magnet, magnetite to actually smelt the ore. Uh, and I'll do greater than nine. So I'm, I want to smelt the ore, 10 of it, uh, but only if I have at least some of that to smelt, then I'll do the order. So I usually do this with smelting, um, have the, the stuff available. But the other thing I do for this one is I actually do want to have the coal available to do it. Uh, so I don't want to start smelting if I don't have it. So again, with that one, I also put the condition in here. But also with these, 
because I don't want them to sit around and wait for that many. Um, what I usually do for smelting batches is I do a lot less at a time. So I do five or three, and that's where I put my, my batches at. Um, that way I, I don't have to wait for a full batch of 10 to go out there and do it. So having the, the multiple conditions is, help, is helpful. Now with smelting, um, I don't usually want the ore to just sit around. I'm fine with it sitting around as iron bars. So I won't put the amount of available iron bars as less than anything because I want all my ore to come in. So whereas the beds, I cared more about the, the amount of beds I had and I don't care about the inputs. With the ores, I care about the inputs and I don't care about how many I have. So that's kind of the difference between those, those types of jobs. Um, the other types of jobs you might have is something like uh, soap, make soap from tallow. So this one's complicated um, because it's it's a multi-step thing. So the soap itself um, requires both lye and fatty globs to make. Um, so I'm going to make um, so I'm going to need both of those to make the soaps, and then the lye itself is another step. Um, so I'm going to have to make lye, um, and lye comes from ash. So I need uh, some amount of ash available. Uh, I don't really care about empty buckets because I usually create lots of, I, mean, I, I usually have a command for making buckets that's similar to my beds that if there's not enough buckets, just make some more buckets. So I never really have to put the amount of buckets here because I'm, I'm just automatically creating them. So I need ash. But with this one, I probably don't want to ash too much. Um, so I, I am probably going to put the lye in there too. That way I'm not just stockpiling ash. Um, I only want enough lye, I mean enough, so I'm not stockpiling lye. I only want enough lye available to kind of run the next soap job. Um, However, the soap job, I might actually want a limit on that. So maybe I'm gonna set this to the limit of whatever the hospital has. So my hospital might be looking for 10 bars of soap. So I'll have the available, if it's less than 10, go ahead and make some soap bars. So now I've got soap bars and I've got the lye to go for it. The tallow actually comes from your uh, butcheries. They come, it comes from fat when you're butchering something like a cow or a horse, you'll get some, some fats. And those fats will be rendered into tallow. What's nice is the game automatically will do all of those as long as you have, um, as long as you haven't changed any of your defaults. You don't actually have to worry about the tallow input. Um, you only have to worry about the lye input. But even the lye, that's coming from ash. So we still don't have a way to make ash yet. So we are gonna have to put, uh, to make ash. Uh, make ash and ash comes from yet another thing ash comes from logs so we got logs to make ash now with this again we're back to a log input I don't really care about ever doing log inputs I'm just gonna do ash so if ash is less than 10 make 10 ash so again this way we won't stockpile excessive amounts of ash so what will happen with with all of these set is the game's gonna check and it's going to show, okay, do we have do we have fatty globs? Let's just say that we have as much tallow as we need. Um, we've, we've butchered a bunch of cows. But we don't have anything else done on the, the cycle. So this one's going to look and say, okay, well, we don't have any lye. So this one's not going to start. Uh, since we don't have any ash, I just accidentally deleted it. Sorry about that. The next one it's going to check is this one and say, um, do we have any ash available? No, we don't have any ash available, but it'll check the ash one and it'll look and say, okay, we, the ash one is just always going to go. So as long as we have some logs somewhere on the map, which we have logs on the map, then this one will trigger and start making ash. Then once some ash is made and we get this batch done, we'll have 10 ash. And then the make lie will trigger and say, hey, we got 10 ash now. Let's make 10 lie. So the 10 lie will be produced. And then this one will trigger and say, hey, we got 10 lie now. Let me make 10 bars of soap. And then what's going to happen is the ash will trigger again as soon as we get down below. The lie will trigger again as soon as we get down below. 
So then we'll end up with 10 lie, but we're not going to make any more soap bars as long as we haven't used any, so we'll just have 10 lie sitting around. And then after we got that, the ash will trigger one more time, so we'll have 10 ash sitting around, 10 lie sitting around, and 10 soap bars sitting around. And then none of these are going to trigger again. It's just going to sit there and wait until we start using some, po some soap bars, and then everything's going to start triggering again. As soon as we start using soap bars, we'll make, make another batch of lye, make another batch of lye, we'll trigger another batch of ash, and the whole thing will just continue. So that's what's nice about these, these work orders, is once you have them set up, you no longer have to go there and look at it again. As long as you, you give some thought to what you want to do, even if it's a multi-step process, it can all get set up that your managers just check these daily to make sh to see if anything is in a state that it wants to produce more, and your your work orders will start producing it for you. So it's it's something where you have to give a little bit of brain power and a little bit of thought to set it up, but then it gives you a lot more brain power back so you can work on so many other aspects of your fort and you don't have to worry about this one. Uh, hopefully this helped. If you've got any questions, uh, please post them in the chat and I'll get to them, uh, possibly make another video if that helps. Thank you very much.